Okay, before you start this video, uh, this is where I stopped. Before you start this video, I want you to be aware, though we didn't cover a lot of ground yet, that I worked a lot in teaching some technique here that uh, most people are not that comfortable working with. So there is a lot of technique time in here and up in here. So pay attention to this video mostly or, well, hugely for technique. Uh, there may be some new things in there for most of you. Not everybody, but most of you. I don't know how this is going to work out, if I can do this properly, but I'm going to try and paint this turn this way, and let's see if, how it works out. And I'm doing that because... Uh, it's harder for people to watch it sideways, especially when there's faces involved. As I will know, because I don't know if I can do this. Okay. So, um, we were painting with, uh, I've got Queen Gold here. It's gotten a little bit dirty with my other colors, but I've got Queen Gold here. I've got Queen Burnt Scarlet, and I've got Black. And that's basically what we were using. Uh, what I want to do here... I've kind of got some detail in here. It's not anywhere near dark enough, but I've kind of got some detail in here. I want to darken this whole side. Uh, even this area is probably darker than it is over here. It doesn't look like it because it's got darks around it. It looks really white, but it's probably a notch darker. So, let's mix something up. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I need what I had over here, but I don't remember what I had over here. So let's just see what we can conjure up here. Let's see. We'll use some, some red and some gold. And as I remember it, we were using quite a bit of black. Yeah, that might work. Gonna move this back out of the way. Okay, now you've got a couple of ways you could go about this. So I'm gonna do it the easy way. Well, I don't know if it's really easier. But if you're new to this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you might, we're just gonna do a big area here. And I've just been painting it in, but I'm gonna show you another way of going about it. I'm going to put water. I'm going to lay water in here. I kind of don't like doing this anymore because I've found that it can get to be kind of a crutch and I can wind up with people working way too... Uh, way too wet, you know, with all mushy edges because it feels safer that way and blending, 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 and and then they wind up with just mush. So I've got water out over here. Now this part of the forehead right here stays light, but we're going darker right along here. And you can see where I had a line here before that we painted up to. I don't want to get quite all the way up to that line, probably. Let's see what this looks like over here. Okay, this is going to be about right. It looks brighter and prettier than this till it dries. Oh, and then it kind of isn't as great. Okay, so I think I've got this name Smithsonian Man. Uh, I hope I do, because... Because... I don't know why, because, okay. So here, I'm just going to let this get, just let it do that, okay? And go off and leave it. And I want to cover the ear. In fact, that ear is going to go way dark eventually. All this area of the beard over here is darker. Mm. You know what? I've got a little too much water right down here. I'm going to suck some of it up. 
and see I'm squeezing the brush out so that this mix that goes in here will be full strength Let's come, let's see, I want all of this, oops, forgot, okay, there's the eyebrow, okay, I'm all right, I almost went over my edge. This is a little harder to do, turn this way. We did a lion head one time, and he was rolled over on his back, so his face was upside down. And I had to turn him right side up to finish him because I couldn't tell enough about him otherwise. Okay, let's see, right there. And then I might want to soften some edges or I might not, let's see, let's, let's put a little water just on the end of this brush. So you can make a big brush be a little one just by not loading it all the way up if it's got a great point. Now this one doesn't have a great point anymore. And natural hair brushes don't keep that great point quite as long either. See, I think I want this whole area to be a little darker there too. Okay, and then we've got some shadow coming down here on the mustache. It makes kind of a little follows the, the, the individual hairs in the mustache, so I'm giving it some little rough edges there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to wait for that to dry. So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's see, let me just clean that up just a little bit more. And here's the thing, one needs to keep an eye on this. Oh, look at that. See, that's coming over my edge right here. Ooh. Now, if I need to fix something out in here, make it lighter, I would not do it by blotting. I would suck it up with the brush because that would just be, make a horrible mess if I blotted. But right along this edge where I wanted to keep it lighter, I'm going to go ahead and blot. So I really want it to be considerably lighter. And I will have to turn that right side up to detail it. But while that is drying, let's just go put some darks in here. I don't want to just put a black in. Because if I just put a black in, it will look like it's just a black there. It won't look, it won't have the richness that this has. This has brown in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe put a little gold in my red. And I'm going to put a layer of red down here. And it we needs to be really strong red. There we go. Okay. Well, that may run up in here. But that's okay, because that area is really dark. Now, when we get over here to his bow tie, we got to pay attention. We need to leave some light areas. Okay, and I'm going to let this part of the tie be lighter later, so I'm gonna separate it out. Okay, I guess this is that. I think I know a little bit more about how y'all feel working sometimes by trying to work sideways. I feel I've, I've sort of lost my bearings here, so it's uh, it feels a lot more difficult. And sometimes I lose my place on what I'm looking at here, too, I noticed. 
And I think that happens to students a lot. You know, when you, especially when you're trying to just imitate what someone else is doing instead of taking off on your own, it's harder. It's really harder. If I try to copy something I've done exactly, I've found out I can't do it. Um, I had a commission one time that I just couldn't do because I had to copy something I'd already done and I couldn't seem to make it work. So, well, well, we'll go ahead and put the red in here. I think there's, this is a darker area there too. You know, if I mess up a little bit on it, I'm not too, I won't be too broken up about it. Oh, whoops. That's the end right there of his. I kept on going. Well, you know what? There's a little red halo out here that I really love in this picture. And I guess I'm going to have one right there. So we'll just do this. And. Yeah, I like that little halo along there. I think we're just going to make that happen on this side, too. Make it match. I just love that red when it's wet. Watercolor's just not all that bright when it's dry, but you can glaze it with something and put the brightness right back in it. You know, when it's dry, you can put Mod Podge on top of it. Satin Mod Podge, and boy, it'll brighten it up. Just don't try to enter it in a competi competition after that. So, okay, that's how far we've gotten. I'm gonna dry this. Actually, I'm going to let it set in, soak in, and then I'm going to dry it. Well, I stop and I looked at this turn this way, and it's so foreshortened that it just, it just, it's horrible. So, I'm going back to painting this way because it's easier for me anyway. Okay. Okay. I just don't have the right kind of setup and I don't have the viewership that would require me to have a better setup. So I've got black here. I am just going to paint some black in on this in order to, you know what, uh, we could make his shoulder go out a little bit more there. Well, I'm going to want to detail some shapes around there. Uh, fact. This is going to be so dark and so opaque that I really don't have to concern myself with... Um, in fact, I'm going to have to pull up more black. The reason I'm going ahead and putting black in here now... So I'll have some good darks, and that will help me gauge how dark to do this. I'm going to have to mix up more black. You notice it's a nice, strong, rich black. Uh, you can still see the red through it. When it dries, you're going to see a lot of red through it. But on top of that, it's still wet enough to just flow off that brush, especially if I turn the brush up this way and let gravity do the work. Because gravity is my friend. Ugh. Okay. I'm going to go ahead 
and turn the video camera off and mix up more black and I'm gonna fill all this in and then I'll come back. Okay, so the last time I was working on this, I was just not in the right place. Uh, I have come back and I've washed out some of the black in here, okay? And so this has given me something comparable to this area. Now all I have to do is put darks back in here and shading. Well, why am I so focused on this one? I've got this whole dang face to finish up. Wow. Well, one of the reasons is that sometimes when I'm starting out, I don't feel quite with it at all. Uh, like right now, I'm doing this video because I need to produce a video, not because the painting is calling me. So what do I do? You know, well, there, we have a lot of days like that, and what do you do? Uh, if you need to sit down and paint no matter what, which is would be a good idea for all of us. So the thing is, start out with something a little bit easier than dealing with the face. Uh, and as that's a good place, clothes are a great place to warm up before you go to the face. I used to always start with the face because I wanted to be sure that I was going to be successful with it. Otherwise, you know, I would throw that out and start over. Uh, but the fact is that sometimes you just need to get into the flow. Okay, so another thing that we have is we have this area in here that has no shading in it yet. And what I plan to do is fix this shading. And as I do, I'm going to begin to work back up into these areas and deepen them some. Uh, and then I'll head for the rest of the face. But having these darks really does help me get deep enough values because particularly when you're a little bit afraid of messing up the thing that happens is that it's so easy to uh work pale because you feel safer and then you put another pale layer because you feel safer and then another pale layer and you find out that once you put the uh, dark in that makes a picture pop that you're still too pale and, and, and so you have a lot of that work to do over again. Okay, so this is a way to prevent that too. Uh, if you have something, some area that you want to have strong color or a good strong value that doesn't involve the face, it's nice to get that in early. That can influence the way the whole rest of the painting looks because your brain is adjusting for that. Okay. I know, I talk about your brain a lot, like I think I know what's going on in it. I might. So, I want to modify these areas. And I'd like to do it in one whack, maybe. Uh, rather than where I laid in the red and then the black over it. So, to do that, now this is dried paint. I'll have to pull up some more in a little bit. I... I spritzed the colors I'm going to use and put the lid back on my palette so that I could have um, some really rich color. It, it, doing that means I could pull up color very much like comes out of the tube. So I'm going to add black into this red. And that looks about right. I don't know. It's close. I've got a number six round here. For those that are wanting to know so let's see let's let's work on this little ditty right here that's this thing and oh dear well I seem to be just covering the whole thing up because okay, put in strong color here and let's start to pull it down you know that's not quite red enough Let's get a little more red in over here. 
I just add a little extra red right there too. And wash my brush out. I'd rather it was a little too red than too black. So I'm pulling color here and it's getting lighter. Now that'll have to dry and then I'll do more stuff to it. Let's pull some color down here and well, this needs to get that dark too. So I'm gonna have to add other things in here and then there's this little dark spot there. I can't add that in yet. This, I didn't, I, I covered up. There should be a part out here. I wonder what I can do about that. Here's the thing. Because this is really strong color, a lot of it's sitting on the surface, it's extremely easy to lift this. Um, I'll tell you what, let's try a soft brush. I've got here just a flat shader, synthetic shader. So it's it's very um, it's very narrow that way and wide this way. So I'm going to use the narrow direction to make a thin line here. Let's see what happens. Well, there it is. In fact, I was going to blot it. And I think I'm not even going to blot the thing. Let's see. I think I'll leave it just like that. Oh, that's even better than if I'd, you know, done it right the first time. Hmm. You never know. Okay. Let's see. So, come back in here. See if that's, that might be too red now. I may have to add more color. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit too red now. Add a little more black back into this. You notice that I put down color and it wasn't quite the right color, how it was able to adjust it right there on the paper. Okay, so that's like the darkest areas there. And washing my brush out. And we all know how this goes. So the thing is, it, you can't just follow me step by step on all of this. Well, I mean, I guess you could. But that's kind of a hard thing to do. Like I mentioned before how I've tried to paint paintings that, that I painted before and repaint them just the way I did before. And not only is that not fun, and it's not fun, because uh, it's just too stressful. I think, I think I'll just put in this lighter value all through here for now. Picked up a little more red there. Oh, I think that'll look good. Okay. Oh. Uh, where was I? I don't know where I was. Oh, trying to trying to just do what I do. The thing is to watch and get the idea of the techniques. And, and you know, learn about some of the details on the face or, or these areas. But don't get caught up in trying to do exactly what I do as I do it. Because uh, that takes all the fun out of it and just creates stress. Okay, so I filled this in and that's a little, maybe that's a little too dark, I don't know. I think it is. It's a little too dark for this picture, but I wouldn't mind a little more drama here. This is one of my favorite spots, but maybe I'll give it a really gentle blot here. Well, yeah. paint is drying very fast again. So remember, a small area like this uh, takes longer, to, uh, I mean, usually dries faster. 
So I'm pretty much going over what I have right here anyway because I just like this area. And so maybe I would like to call a little more attention to it. Um, this spot right here, I believe that's dried. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. I could come in and add this as part of the tie or something. I can't make a lot of sense out of it. Okay. So, uh, I've got that. And what I wanted was, I wanted this area under here to be a little darker. I think what I'll do is, I think I'll pull the edge of the tie up here. And if I don't have a distinct edge later and want one, I'll come back and add one in, you know, add it in later. There. I might just like it like that. Uh, let's go ahead and let's put tint on this too. I think I need just a little bit more color. There we go. That is, I needed to pick up a little more color on my brush. You didn't see that. Okay, we'll stop there because this up in here under the barrier actually gets darker. And I'm, I do think I need to fill in with just some value right here. This is when we did the side of the face. And maybe I stopped a little too soon. Mm, noodle around there. Okay. Now, we have an area right here. Let's just put this back in because we can do it. Okay. See this part of the tie right there? It's 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 the other side of this, right there. Okay, that is darker than the background, and it is rimmed by an area that is catching more light that is lighter than the background. This is a couple notches darker than the background, and this light area is only a tiny bit lighter, but it, it stands out and it gives you, you know, that edge. So... I tell you what, let's go back to the black. And I went really strong, but remember, it's got to be wet enough to flow off this brush. One of the things is, when you're picking up uh, these dry areas like this, if you've got your brush really loaded up with water, sometimes you may find that you actually have thinner paint instead of, thicker, instead of stronger paint. Um, so... Pay attention to what you're getting there. All right. Let's see. This thing, I can't even see my lines anymore. You know, that area right in there is looking pretty good already. Okay, let's make that come out. Got a shape like that on it. Comes down here, and then there's a shadow. See that little shadow there? Well, we're going to... Make that all happen right there. The difference is that I think I'll soften the edge on that shadow, but not on the tie. That'll help make a distinction between the edge of the tie and the shadow. So let's make sure we don't have too much water here because we have a lot of strong paint under there and it's so easy to pull it up that you got to be a little bit careful here and no blotting there absolutely no blotting okay so later we're going to lift that a little bit now we have um i'm going to just approximate this here's a shadow under the collar or a shadow of the edge of the collar And then this area needs to be softer again. Whoa. See, I pulled up a little bit of paint there instead of making it better. And here it's hard to tell what I've got. Uh, it'll have to dry before I can tell whether something's darker or lighter. I can't tell. 
So let's just take our bigger brush. And here's the thing, too. In areas like this, where, where you've got a real strong dark, uh, you, you really don't want to put more strokes into it than you have to because those strokes are making the... Uh, are apt to move around the underneath paint. So what we're going to do is we're going to use as little water as we can that but enough that the paint again floats off the end of the brush. The, and the larger brush again you have you make less strokes with a larger brush. I am going to have to blend these edges. All right, large brush, moderate amount of water. What I want is to put as little pressure on here. I want to get water on here without much pressure. Well, I'm just barely, gently moving that. I mean, this is almost a whole different kind of painting technique than what we usually use. Okay. Not bad. And this isn't too dark either. Uh, we need a little bit of color on these. But I, I want to leave some white. We just need to soften the edges. So I'm going to take my black and red mixture. Oh, just a tiny bit of the black and red mixture. It's, it's pale. I have a weaker mixture here. See that? That's because I like the look of this old-fashioned photograph with these kind of colors kind of bleeding here and there. Uh... I don't know how this got color in it. it it's one of those sepia tint things. Did someone uh, come in and did they colorize these by hand or something? If someone knows about what these were like, how these were done, I'd, I'd love for them to let me know. Okay, so see, that's... Well, that's pretty junky looking, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spread it immediately because, boy, things are drying fast today. Okay, I didn't get that shape right in here, right? But I'm, I'm happy with what's going on here so far. We have to do a few more things to it, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So up here underneath the beard, I'm going to take some of that same color mixture. Right here, the underneath of the beard is darker because this is the edge of his white collar. It's just not very white there because it's in shadow. This area is actually darker. This is dried by now. I've got a large pan of, gigantic pan of water boiling on the stove. Try and get some moisture in the air. This area here is just darker. I can't tell what it is. So I don't have to know what it is. I don't have to make it a thing. I just have to make a blurry, dark area right here. It could be beard in shadow overlapping the edge of the coat or maybe not overlapping anything. And then I left this little spot so I could make some interesting beard edges there. All right. So here we go again.
trusty little, and, and the fact that that's an angle shader has nothing to do with why I use it. it uh, it's just uh, what I was able to buy. Uh, I like these little super flat craft brushes. God, that one's bent. These little super flat craft brushes that uh, are at Hobby Lobby. I use them, I usually trim them off and make lifting brushes out of them, but it's kind of nice to have one like this too, which is a, still a lifting brush. But I want something that's very gentle. Whoop, what was that? I believe that's white paint on this paper towel. Well, I'll have to fix that later. We won't worry with it right now, but. Okay, this, this paper towel, this is a different paper towel. A little more water here. There we go. That's kind of broken up and everything, which is good. I'll have to paint that back in. I wasn't gonna do it now, but you know what? I'll do it now. It's distracting. We'll have to see what that looks like when it dries. And this is an easy patch, just gets a dot of black on it there. Okay. So now let's work on his face. I think what I will do, I've got this nice deep color mixed up here, a little of it, and it's not too soupy, so it's easy to work out of. That's a little too red. Let's, well, not much. Let's put a little more black in it. And, you know, you, you don't have to get yours just like mine. Mine's not like mine. Every time I do it, I'm not that careful with it because um, I'm, I'm not getting that big a difference in color. Um, I'm not getting anything that stands out as wrong. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, that looks like the black, though. I believe I didn't wash my brush out after I put more color over there. So let's clear that out. And I'm going to just detail in some of these areas. Not, I'm not circling. You see how I didn't make the whole tear duct. I left part of it open. So I'm putting in really dark color that might actually wind up being there later. Uh, and if it holds or if it gets thick and bleeds out, I want it to just have, it's like that line you where you want that line broken up. Well, I'm breaking this up now. That's, that's the beginning of an eye, but see, it's broken up. Well, let's, let's just go over here. Let's do some of this over here, too. This might be a nice step towards finishing this area. We've got all lights. I like that where two lines join. See, there's one going this way, and then there's this one coming across. And I guess it's an optical illusion that they tend to look a little thicker right where they join. And that makes some of those little dark 
emphasis areas that I like. Shirley Trevina does that a lot, intentionally thickens a line where they join. Uh, And after watching her, I've started doing it. I think it's a really good device to get you those little extra dark spots that add to the painting. Right here, this part of the wrinkle above his eye, crease. It's not a wrinkle. Well, it's becoming a wrinkle. Uh, this part is um, a little thicker right up there. I want to take advantage of that. This should not go very dark, so I shouldn't I shouldn't do much with it. You could go ahead and put a little bit of pupil in his eye. Now here's what I would do. I would probably put that in, and then I would immediately, while that's wet, go ahead and soften the edges on it. They that looks very fuzzy and soft. I just pull that out and put a little more depth into the color in his eye in some places. We'll leave some light and fuzzy, fuzzy edge there. And you notice I left it because I had a little highlight on his eye there. There's actually more highlights there than what I put in. Don't make those highlights too strong. I did that to a painting and I never seemed to be able to quite fix it either. Yeah. Okay, this is looking better. Let's just go ahead and play with this area for a while. Oh, this, there, this little spot right there. Now, I'm pointing these spots out to you. That doesn't mean you have to follow me step by step. I just want you to notice some of these areas uh, because when you're new to painting a portrait you don't necessarily see everything in fact I don't know that I ever see everything I probably don't sometimes we don't know what we don't see right okay that little that whole area in there gets a lot darker let's just keep playing with that that seems to be going well here so let's Let's go ahead and deepen this. That little spot right there will have to get even darker. But this comes over the lid and here, all the way to right there. And I could pull in some eyebrow hair. Don't make it cover all the, the lighter spots that I've got there. Leave some of those lighter spots coming through. That'll break it up and make it look more right and then the eyebrow hairs really get lost as we come over this way oh I didn't mean for that to be that dark I just wanted a little something more there that's actually pulled over further than his actual eyebrow but I like it so right here See, those are, those are not eyebrow hairs. Those are wrinkles. And they're coming in pretty close right here. Oh, they're way too dark. Ah, well, that's very fast. Let's, let's lighten them. The paint that we're using is not highly staining. So that works in our favor. Ah, okay. That's, that's more or less right. Well, we need some more pale... Let's see, what I need to do is I need to take a little of my mixture here, my reddish brown mixture, and I need to wet some of it down so it's thinner. Sometimes it's real easy to get lazy and kind of work out of the same spot when you know you shouldn't. And sometimes I do it, I mean, because you, you could pull it up and stuff, but... Uh, at some point, maybe it's not a good idea. So.
So right here, under the eye, comes about that far. That over there should be lighter. And this area under here, I'm adding to the dark. Thin line, a little thin line there. I didn't even blend that out. Uh, I like it a little bit raggedy. I think, though, that I need to pull up a little bit of the color there. If it wants to come up, I'll do it. And if it doesn't, okay. Well, I pulled up. I'll have to come back when that's dry and work that spot. But you can see, okay, that is working. Yes. Let's take some more of the strong red, a uh, strong red black, and there. so we need to soften edges on part of it. This will soften the edges it comes out, and here we'll pull that down a little bit. Maybe out onto this part of the ear a little bit. Give it a little shading. Okay. Hmm. It's coming along here. Okay, we've got a whole big area to tackle here yet. Oh, big. Now, I can tell you what Charles Reed would do with this. Uh, which is totally not what I'm going to try to accomplish with this because this is a um, this is a Smithsonian man and we want him to look like a Smithsonian man I guess we're we're trying to recreate this kind of uh, trying to make sure I got it where you can see it uh, but Charles Reed would actually take this area and he would make it well, a lot of them would. Uh, Bert Silverman's another one. If you ever want to look up Bert Silverman uh, and, and look at his work, which is gorgeous, um, you'll see that these areas might kind of just get a little bit lost. A lot of the edges get lost. This side might, of the head might even get lost into the background. Uh, but we're not, we're not doing this with this guy. So... Uh, Let's go ahead and get the inside of the nostrils darker. Know where the real shape inside that nostril is as opposed to the shadow that's next to it. Uh, so that you're not making a big hard edge on that nostril. You know, you don't want this big this whole area isn't dark. This is just that curve coming around the outside of the nostril that's got shading on it. And this is actually inside the nostril. So keep that in mind. This area over here has got a whole lot more shadow on it. So I'm just gonna put that little nostril area in there for the moment and let that dry, and I think I'll come back up here and work on this eye.